Hello and welcome. Welcome back. This is how to build your analytics in one hour or less using Metabase. My name is Tim Abraham and this is part two of two-part video series where in part one we took the analytics app Metabase and we deployed it on AWS using Elastic Beanstalk. In this episode we are going to start using it, connecting it to our app and start answering some very interesting hard-hitting business questions about who's ordering what kind of pies and how our pie business is doing. So let's go ahead and click this URL that we picked in the first video and that should take us to Metabase. And here we are. Looks like everything is working and so let's just get started. So we're gonna sign up for Metabase and I'm just gonna put in my name and my email and a brief password because this is just a demo and the name of my team this is my pie company up oh, i typed the passwords too fast and they don't match now they should okay so next step we're going to add our data with metabase you can connect to most of the databases that you might be using they've got the big analytics databases like BigQuery, Druid, and Redshift, as well as the ones you might be using in production like Mongo, MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server. We're gonna connect to our Postgres production database. Um, by the way, this will be querying the production database, so it could interfere theoretically with uh, the performance of my app, so generally what I recommend you do is create a read replica of your application production database and query that instead. But if you're small, like we are, it's okay to query your production database. It's not gonna really have huge repercussions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this out. Um, you can pick any name for the name you want it to, but have it something that's meaningful to you. Um, and the rest of this stuff, I'm actually gonna get from uh, my terminal because I used Heroku to deploy my Pi app and I can get all of that information from their command line features. So I am going to split screen and if you're following along at home and you downloaded the Pi app and deployed it, you can just do the same thing. PG credentials pass it your app name and you'll get all of your connection string stuff right here host port port is always 5432 on Postgres database name database username and last but not least the super secret password. All right. And I'll just click next. And I'm not going to subscribe to their newsletters because, big surprise, this isn't actually my email address. So I'll just say, take me to Metabase. And I'm going to get rid of this terminal. All right. So here we're going to be taken through a number of onboarding steps but I'm gonna skip over those right now and just kind of get right into this because I wanna keep this under an hour. Um, and I wanna keep this video probably under 15 minutes so I still have your attention. This is Metabase. I'm the first one to have joined this particular instance, so it shows my activity feed. What we're gonna do here is put some basic charts up that are interesting to us as founders of this pie company. So. We'll start by asking some questions. Generally what I wanna know um, and what I think my team wants to know is how many users are signing up each day and how many of each type of pies are being ordered. So that's a good start for me. Um, that will tell me a little bit about where I'm going and maybe where I need improvement. So let's just start with that and then we'll call it a day. If you've never used a database before, uh, the easiest way to think about them is a series of spreadsheets. And to show you that, I'm gonna pick the table in 
the Pies database called Users and just show you the contents of it. So you can see that each row in our database just represents a user, just like it would in a spreadsheet. So like I said, I want to figure out what, uh, how many users have signed up each day. So I'm simply going to add a grouping here and group it by day and count the number of rows. I could also write a SQL query for this too. There's this panel right here or this button that will switch this from the query builder view to a SQL panel um, that I can convert and then just write whatever SQL I want in there too. So if you like writing SQL, that's an option. But if you don't know how to write SQL, they make it pretty easy to do all of the SQL operations in this little UI. So here we go. We've got our answer number of users per day and it's going to look a lot nicer as a line graph so i'm going to compute that and there we go so within just a couple minutes i have a chart of how many users have signed up each day and it looks like i've got some things to worry about because user signups has dropped precipitously now i know that that's because i'm using fake data and this is not actually a real app but if this were if this were a real app, I'd probably be pretty worried right now, but I'm not worried. So I'm going to save this question and I'll just call it something cool like user registration by day. A description, yeah, I don't really need one here. I think that's pretty informative. So I'll save that and I'll add it. Yeah, I guess I'll add it to a dashboard. Create the dashboard. We'll say daily. KPIs. If you don't know what KPIs mean, they're key performance indicators. I know uh, people used to say that phrase a lot and for a while I didn't even know what it meant. Um, so I guess I could have googled it but I didn't know what it meant for a while and was too embarrassed to ask. So it means key performance indicators. So here is the dashboard view. You can take the card, drag it out to a size that's visually appealing and just click save. And now we've already got a uh, dashboard in the making that we could put up in our, uh, you know, behind the front desk at our company and everyone can kind of see as new data comes in how this metric is trending. But let's go add another question. Uh, I'm interested in knowing the number of pies purchased per day. And so I'm going to find that in the order table where each row is an order of a pie by a certain user. So again, I want to find the uh, number per day, but I also want to find the number by the name of pie. And I'm just going to do a count of row and create another, let's see, maybe I'll create a stacked bar chart. That sounds kind of nice. Um, they should have that option here where, yep where I can stack and I can even pick the bar colors so that they go along with the um, pie colors a little bit better. Cherry and then pumpkin. Pumpkin can be blue or purple. There's no orange so that looks cool. And I don't really love the way this looks so I'm going to change it to grouping it by week instead. Okay, that looks a little bit more interesting. It looks like we had one week that we didn't really do that well except for a few cherry pies. Every other week, it looks like we've sold about 16 pies. There's some fluctuation here and there. And then, of course, we're not doing too well now because we stopped creating random data. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. This is a really pretty looking graph. And I'm going to say weekly pie sales this one i will give a description to by pi and i will add that to a dashboard the same one as before and i think this is actually more interesting than the daily signups so i'm going to make it a little bit larger all right so you sort of get the idea here this is kind of how it works uh, I can invite my whole team 
through the admin panel to sign up, um, or I can use Google OAuth so that everyone with my same uh, team domain name can sign up without me having to individually invite them. And then everyone's going to be able to kind of check this out every day, play around with the data themselves, and this will all kind of get saved. You can see the activity feed is now looking pretty, um, like it's got some action on it. And we can go back to our dashboard. The last thing that you probably want to do when you're starting out is get a pulse set up, which is just a, a daily email or Slack message that goes out to your team with some key stats. Because even though you may be really into data and think it's the best thing to ever happen, there's going to be some people that just don't have the time to come and check Metabase every day. And this is a good way of keeping everyone in sync with what the important numbers that you want everyone to know are. And um, you have two options here. You can either use Slack or email, both of which are really easy to set up, but probably Slack is the easiest one to set up. Um, I'm not going to go through the process because it involves me having to leave Metabase and uh, enter in a bunch of Slack-related passwords and stuff, which I just don't want to mess with at the time. But I highly recommend you get the Pulse set up um, probably in the first week where you're using Metabase, and it's going to be really beneficial to your team. So hopefully that gives you a very good introduction into what you can do with Metabase. And um, let's see what time it is. I think I started close at 10 to 5 on this video. So that's uh, two 15-minute videos with a 20-minute delay where we waited for the app to deploy. That's under an hour, around 50 minutes. And look, we've already got a cloud-hosted analytics product that we could connect right to our data. We didn't have to write any code. We didn't have to spend any money. And we can give this out to our whole team and have everyone have access to our data. And that's pretty powerful. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find it interesting. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve. And uh, let me know how your experience goes in setting this up yourselves. Thanks, everyone. Bye.